Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my rather ambitious June TBR. As always I do have my set TBR of four books for the month um, so I'm going to talk you through those first of all and then I will explain the rest of the month to you. So the first book as always is the In Death Read Along book and this month I will be reading Divided in Death as always, it's based around Eve Dallas, who is a New York Police and Security Department detective with the Homicide Department, and she will have a murder or murders to solve. Uh, she will do this with the help of her husband, Rourke, and with all of her uh, sidekicks that we've been meeting through the previous, I don't know how many books I'm in now, I think 18, 19 books I'm in now. Um, Again, I thoroughly enjoy them every month. I look forward to reading them. I usually have them as my first book of the month because it gives me a good momentum to carry on with, with reading and because I always look forward to picking them up. I've stopped reading the blurb to see what they're about, so I don't really know what the premise is of this one. But as always, I know that she will have a murder to solve with the help of her family and friends. The second book, as always, is the book club pick of the month. If you haven't seen any of my previous TBRs or wrap-ups uh, then just to let you know I'm a member of the Just One More Page book club which is run by Jess McGlynn. She has a channel on here called Jess McGlynn. She has an Instagram page where she's Jess McGlynn. There is an Instagram page for the book club Just One More Page and I will link that down below for you and go and take a look and see what we've been reading in past months or go and have a look at my past wrap-ups and see what we've been reading for the last few months. We've been going for almost 12 months now and we're starting to run out of genres. Um, there's lots of genres and sub-genres that we could probably pick um, but main themes, we, we kind of feel like we're running out of things now. So we're going with themes um, as much as we are genres. This month we've decided to go back to kind of the suspense and we've picked an Agatha Christie book and we are reading The Death of Roger Ackroyd, which is a Hercule Poirot mystery. I haven't read anything about it. I know it's a closed room mystery. So someone dies in a room that how did the killer get in and out? Um, apparently it is really, really good. Apparently it's the best Hercule Poirot mystery. It is actually touted as the best Agatha Christie book of them all. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. I've only read two Agatha Christie books in the past, um, but I did both enjoy all of those. I've seen lots of the screen adaptations that have been made over the years with various actresses playing Marple and uh, David Suchet playing Poirot. And I've always enjoyed those. I've never been able to predict the killer. Um, and apparently this is one where you will be completely surprised. And other than that, I know nothing about it. So I'm looking forward to picking it up this month. So now we have my two spins. So let's get on and show you the first spin for the month. So the spin hasn't been terribly kind to me. Um, this is Gordanius the Finder. It's an omnibus edition. Uh, Gordanius is a Roman um, detective. So it's a historical fiction, historical, historical fiction mystery book. Um, the first book is called Roman Blood and something's been stolen or gone missing. And this gentleman Gordanius has been brought in to find it and uh, solve the mystery um hopefully it will play on the fact that you know with the agatha christie book and with the in death book hopefully uh the mystery side of it will keep that going keep that momentum going for me um what i've done with the wheel spin though is where i have the omnibus edition i have only put in the book that i need to read so in the same way as i've done series on there where i've just put the next book in the series i need to read I only have to read the first book in the omnibus in this. So it is just Roman blood that I need to read, which is a little bit more helpful because if I read all four, that's 1200 pages and I'm not going to get through all four this month. Um, but again, bit of a mystery. I like mysteries. I like trying to solve them. I like seeing if I can figure it out before the end comes. Um, and 
obviously you know did i pick up on all the clues so i do really enjoy mystery so it should be okay it's just it's been sitting on my kindle for a long time and it's one i've looked at and i think the historical fiction side of it has put me off in the past um but having read a few historical fictions now in the last 12 months um maybe i've got a taste for them so let's find out what the second spin for the wheel has thrown up oh dear um okay not sure about this one uh pets in space embrace the romance pets in space is a bind up of a lot of short stories romance stories so they should be really easy to read i initially bought this short story collection because i wanted to read one of the books in there and i read that at the time um and then slowly i've been gradually working my way through them i am about halfway through the actual book um the actual set of short stories so i think probably what i'll do is i won't aim to read all the short stories i think maybe what i'll do is i'll maybe aim to read a couple of them and maybe try and read them in between the other books that i've got set for the month and, and see how i get on see if i can complete the anthology um but basically they're all romance novels they're all science fiction romance novels set in space and they're based around a pet or an animal that brings the couple together um uh, like i say the few that i've read i've really enjoyed um and i did enjoy the one that i initially bought this set for um so hopefully i can discover a couple of new romance authors through reading this one so that was the set tbr for the month now the reason why i've got rather an ambitious tbr this month is because i have decided to take part in the whatever you want a thon readathon and this is being run by maddie over at book browsing blog basically she set up this readathon um you have to join a team um so you go in and choose whichever team you want to be on you then have to um register so that you can uh, tell her which books you've read for the month and then that earns you points for your team um there are prompts you can follow and there you know there are a couple of reading challenges however because it's called the whatever you want a thon you don't have to do any of that at all if you don't want to apart from logging the books that you've read um you get points for reading the books and you get if you meet certain prompts then you get additional points for that i've joined the middle grade uh, team and i was previously before i saw this come up i was going to do kind of like a middle grade may readathon um for myself not obviously putting it out there for everyone else but i was going to do that for myself because i've got a couple of middle grade series that i want to finish i've got a middle grade book which is the start of a new series um that i wanted to re start I, I started reading it and i want to carry on reading it um and then i've got a couple of other middle grade books that have been on my bookshelves for at least 12 months and i want to get round to them i keep looking at the covers and they're so pretty um that i just want to pick them up so let's go through all the books that i want to read so like i say I actually want to um, try and finish off two series that I've had ongoing that fall into middle grade. Um, and this month I've decided to, like I say, as part of the whatever you want a thon, I've decided to actually try and make this an excuse to do it. So the first series is The Chronicles of Narnia. And I have the last two books to read, which are The Silver Chair and The Last Battle. I read these as a child. I read these when I was about nine, I think, eight or nine. Um, and uh, I don't remember reading these two. I think I only read them once. Um, I've got a bind up of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, uh, Prince Caspian and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And then the next one then has a bind up of these two books. And I never actually, I read them, I read the bind up of these but i don't remember reading them all i know is that it draws in eustace who was introduced in the voyage of the dawn treader and it introduces a new child character called jill and there are 
plots afoot in Narnia that need the human children to come and stop them from being carried out. I'm looking forward to reading these, picking these up finally, finishing the series. I've always enjoyed the Chronicles of Narnia. I've reread The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe quite a few times and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Those are my two favourite. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader being my absolute favourite. Uh, so I am really looking forward to picking these up this month and finally finishing the series and reminding myself what these two books are all about. And then the second series I want to get through is finishing off the Secret Breaker series by H.L. Dennis. This is a series that is based around mysteries that need to be solved by a group of children who are in their, I think they're about 10, 11, 12. Uh, but they have a series of mysteries that they have to solve over the course of six books. And in solving these mysteries, they're then solving a wider mystery surrounding an unreadable document. I've thoroughly enjoyed the first three books. I've uh, read the first three books over the last um, 12 months and really enjoyed them. I really need to sit, finish this series and get them back to my nephew because he wants to reread them as well. He was kind of carrying on and rereading them after I'd finished reading them because he then wanted to talk to me about them. Uh, but we just haven't had an opportunity to do it recently. So I'm making it my mission this month to read all three that I have left in the series and get them back to him. So the three books that are left are The Tower of the Winds, The Pirate's Sword and Circle of Fire. I can't remember what all the um, mysteries are that are in each of these books. They, like I say, they are based around known mysteries anyway. Um, they, the group that are trying to solve the mysteries are based in the famed Bletchley Park, uh, which if you know anything about um, UK history um, and the World War II, that is where the Codebreakers uh, did all of their work. Um, so it's quite fitting, it's quite um, symbolic, and it's also teaching um, young young people a little bit about that at the same time. Uh, like I say, I've thoroughly enjoyed the first three books and I'm really looking forward to picking up these three books and I'm hoping that I can whiz through them all this month to finish them all off to uh, talk to my nephew about. And then the next book is one that I started, but I think I'm going to restart it. Um, it's a book that my sister lent me because she wasn't sure about the content, whether it would be suitable for my nephew or not. At the point that she lent it to me, he hadn't yet finished reading the Harry Potter series. So there were some themes in here that we were a little bit concerned that he might not be ready for. However, he has now caught up and finished the Harry Potter series and he dealt with those themes extremely well. So the book that I'm going to restart, and it is quite a chunker for a middle grade book, but it is Magic uh, by Angie Sage, which is the first in the Septimus Heap series. Um, I did, like I say, I did start it, so that's where I got to uh, with my bookmark. Um, but I've just been kind of like left it on my shelf because we weren't sure initially about the themes, the uh, some of the things that happened in the start whether it would be suitable for my nephew or not but as he handled Harry Potter really well I think that he actually would get on with this book quite well so far with what I've read so far so again it's another one that I want to read and get back to him so that he can carry on and pick it up for himself. Uh, I understand it's all about magic about a young boy who comes into magic um, who doesn't realise that he's got magic um, and him learning to use it and using it to defeat an evil in the kingdom. I don't really know much more than that. It's been a while since I've looked at it, uh, hence the battered bookmark. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to picking this up and giving it another go and hopefully reading it through this month. So those are the main six middle grade books that I want to read this month, um, purely because it ticks a lot of books off of my list and gets some series finished as well, which is something that I've uh, been wanting to try and make progress on this, this year, um, especially with only reading books that I already own and not buying books, which hasn't gone that well. Um, so... I have a few more that I want to show you. Now, these aren't a priority, so if I get to them, for me, they will be a bonus, let alone 
uh, for the scores. So I'm really looking forward to picking these up. And the first one of those is Evernight by Ross McKenzie. I bought this 12 months ago when I was on a reading retreat in Yorkshire, in Grassington. Um, and we went to the little bookshop there and this was on the shelf and I was just really drawn in by this gorgeous cover. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd pick it up and give it a go. I thought it might be great for my nephew. Um, I haven't really looked at it since, so I'm just going to read you the blurb on the back so that we can discover together what this is about. The Evernight has been unleashed. As far back as she can remember, orphan Larabelle Fox has scraped together a living by treasure hunting in the sewers. In a city where emotionless white witches march through the streets and fear of hag magic is rife, Lara keeps her head down. But when she stumbles upon a mysterious little box in the sewers, Lara finds herself catapulted into a world of wild magic, facing adventure, mortal danger and a man who casts no shadow. Sounds really intriguing to me. Um, so it's a bit of a fantasy middle grade. I love fantasy, adult fantasy. So a fantasy middle grade is uh, probably going to be right up my street as well. So I'm looking forward to maybe getting to this one this month. Um, you never know, I might even prioritise it over some of the other middle grades that I've picked. I'll just see how I get on from there. So the next book that I'd like to try and get to this month is, as I say, another middle grade. And this book is Starfell, Willow Moss and the Lost Day. This is the first book in a series. It's by Dominique Valente. Again, it's one that I bought 12 months ago um, as shops are reopening again. I went for a little browse around my local Waterstones and this one was on a buy one, get one free. Um, I think I picked it up with Dragon Mountain, which I read last month. Oh, no, April. Um, and I never got around to reading this one. Again, I've completely forgotten what it's all about. So bear with me while I just read the blurb on the back. Step into a world like no other. Willow Moss, the least powerful sister in a family of witches, has the magical ability for finding lost things, like spectacles or socks. Useful, but not exactly exciting. Then the most feared witch in all of Starfell comes asking for Willow's help. Last Tuesday has gone missing, and without it the whole world could unravel. Now Willow holds the fate of Starfell in her rather unremarkable hands. So... That sounds quite intriguing. How could a whole day go missing and why is it so important um, that it gets found? Um, I'm looking forward to picking this up. I keep looking at the cover of this one. I, it's gorgeous. It's glorious. Um, I think it's really hooked to pull you in. Um, and it's got a beautiful, beautiful, I don't know if you can see it very well, yet yeah, stars um, down the side, the painted edges. So again, it's another one that I really would love to get to this month. Um, there is more in that this is the first in the series you've got the second one on the back uh, which is The Forgotten Tale and I think there is a third one either out or due out very very soon um, I need to go and check out uh, how Gavin over at How to Train Your Gavin um, to find out because he actually loves middle grade a lot of his reading is middle grade if you have a child who is that this kind of age range go and follow his channel his channel is not suitable for kids to watch. It is only suitable for adults to watch because he does use some choice language. However, if you want middle grade recommendations for your child, I do recommend going to watch How to Train Your Gavin. Um, he loves these books. Um, like I say, he's a big champion of the Starfell books and I'm looking forward to picking this up and maybe getting through another and discovering another great middle grade series. And the next three books are the reason why this TBR is quite ambitious, because I don't think I'm going to get to them. I really don't think I'm going to get to them. However, they kind of, they're again, they're ones that sit staring at me on my shelf and I really want to get to them if I can. Um, and the first one of those is Red Wall by Brian Jacks. Uh, I, this isn't the initial book that I read in this series. This was a series that when I was in my final year at primary school in the UK, so I was, it was the uh, school year where I turned 11. Um, the teacher that I had then, every class he had, every year, he would read one of the Red Wolf stories to them. 
Uh, he didn't read Red Wall to my class. He read Moss Flower, uh, which is one of my favourite books. Um, I haven't read it for a long time and I don't have a copy of it, sadly. I really want to get one. Um, however, they don't have them in these um, vintage classics. They only had Red Wall. So I picked up Red Wall when I saw them in the bookshop tw again, 12 months ago. I did read Red Wall many years ago, so after Moss Flower, um, I then wanted to read more books in that series. So I did get Red Wall from the library at that time. And then a couple of years later, um, the same teacher had my sister and she, he read Red Wall to her class. And she actually then went and bought a copy. And between us, we've battered her copy to pieces. Um, but really, really love these. It's fantasy. Um, it's about a group of animals who live in a forest and there is a castle there called Redwall and all these animals talk um, and there's a battle and it's just all good fun and I really enjoyed it and I miss this world. Um, I've read a few of the books uh, since and I've read a few of them as adults and I've given my sister a few of them as gifts over the years because she wanted to collect the series. Uh, but neither of us have really ever got round to rereading them in recent years. So I'm hoping if I can get through this rather ambitious pile of books that maybe I'll get a chance to start it. If not finish it, might get a chance to start it. Um, and I'm looking forward to trying to get there. If not, I think I'm going to have to actually mood read this at some point over the next couple of months um, because I am getting to the stage now where I keep looking at my shelf and it's catching my eye and I'm going to have to pick it up. So the next two books, I'm it's highly unlikely I'm going to read, but they are ones that I've had for a few years now that I want to get to. And they are a retelling of a fairy tale. And the two books are The Beast Within and As Old As Time. These are, as you can tell, probably quite easily, they are Beauty and the Beast retellings. Beauty and the Beast is one of my absolute, and is probably my absolute favourite fairy tale of them all, Disney film of them all. I have watched it over and over again. I can sing all the songs. I know the script uh, fairly well. Um, Belle is my Disney princess. Uh, the original Disney um, animated film came out when I was 11 slash 12. So Belle is my Disney princess. Uh, she's the one that I identify with. And then when they made a live action remake and they cast Hermione Granger as Belle, ah, my world was made um, because I identify with Hermione as well. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but yes, these are retellings um, from the point of view, both I think are from the point of view of the beast, only with slightly different takes. Um, this one is exploring the idea of what actually transformed the beast and his history rather than um, going into the actual Beauty and the Beast story. And then this one is uh, based around possibly is Belle's mum the one that uh, cursed the beast. So, yes. Yes, I'm quite, I'm really, I've been wanting to get to these and I don't know why I don't pick them up because I love the covers. I love the covers. This is part of a whole series of retellings um, that's been done by Autumn Publishing and sponsored by Disney and it's the Twisted Tales. And then this is a villain's um, retelling. So I, I just, I don't know why I haven't gotten to them. I love Beauty and the Beast and I love Beauty and the Beast retellings. I've read a few romance based retellings over the years um, and about five years ago now, I think there was a book that came out by Megan Spooner called Hunted, which was a Beauty and the Beast retelling um, only based around the legend of the Firebird as well built into that one. So it had more Russian folklore built into it rather than the French based, uh, which is the Disney version. So I just don't know why I haven't gotten to them before. And I'm hoping that I can use this as an excuse. And I think loosely that I could include these as middle grade. I will see when I read them, if I get around to reading them. But again, I think they're going to have to go on the mood reading TBR in the next few months because now I've got them off my shelf. I don't want to put them back. So that's my completely mad and absolutely lunatic TBR for the month. Uh, I've got what my four regular books and then I've got 
Ah, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven potential middle grade books. Uh, fifteen books on a TBR, I think, is excessive. I am not going to get through fifteen books. I know in past months, um, wrap ups, you've seen me read eleven, twelve books. I don't think I'm going to do it this month. Um, I'll give it a go as I always do. Um, and watch out for my June wrap up when it goes up in July just to see how well I got on. What are you planning on reading in the month of June? Are you taking a part in whatever you want to thon? If you are, let me know. What team are you on? Are you on middle grade the same as me? Uh, do you have any recommendations for middle grade? If you do, let me know in the comments box down below. As always, I would love to hear from you and discuss your choices there. If you have enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There will be a link to do that on the screen. And I will see you all again next week. Bye.